It seems just like a couple of years ago when I was sitting around the HPEC council table and we were talking about how to implement the new phys ed curriculum. That was the ABCDs. And we were all piloting the implementation binder that had all of those amazing activities in it. Well, here we are in 2023 and we've got another new curriculum that's taking the work that was done then and building on and combining these two very rich uh, curriculums, the phys physical education and the wellness piece. So my name is Paul Marlette and welcome to video number two. So who is this guy? As I've said in the first video, my bio kind of says it all. It's pretty straightforward. But uh, in a short, I have been teaching for over two decades now and have been mentored by some of the greats, some of the best in the province over my career, uh, starting out from a very young teacher to currently. So I have taught grade one to 12 and have held different leadership positions in various but well, I am the one who is so grateful to be able to work with you as we move through this year and providing you some of that support. So in this video, we are going to look at the ins and outs of the new curriculum, the nuts and bolts. After about 12 to 14 hours of working through it, looking through some of the resources, I've come up with a presentation that I hope will uh, simplify it and make it really clear what all the components are and this video will not look at the resources this is just a deep dive into that new curriculum so I hope it serves you and I hope I get to see you concurrently on one of our live sessions as well so let's dive right in I have to move my little face around here how about down there there I'm down here now fantastic so the very first thing I want to talk about is this notion of where were we and where are we now, the then and now. So the last curriculum, we in physical education, we use the ABCDs, the activity, benefits, health, cooperation, and do it daily. So what has that kind of morphed into? In the new curriculum, we have eight core dimensions. The main physical education, the movement pieces, are now active living and movement skill development. Okay. In the wellness curriculum, from the last, the last curriculum, we had responsibility and healthy choices. Well, if we look over, we still have these. We still have healthy relationships. And they've in introduced a new component that used to be embedded called safety. And because it's embedded, it actually crosses over beautifully. The old curriculum, we had the wellness relationships, live learning choices, life learning choices that is the first typo i've seen in my stuff i'll fix that up though and the other on this side we now have character development and some work in nutrition specifically in nutrition the old one we had that human sexuality in this one we're looking at growth and development so it's a broader spectrum from grade one or from kindergarten all the way up to grade six and they also have the human sexuality based within that. And the new one that has been added in is the financial literacy as it relates to wellness. So as I said, this is going to be a fairly text heavy uh, slide deck because I want, you to have, I want you to have something to go back to for yourself or your team where you can also review this. Moving forward, I'm probably not going to be sitting in this desk staring at a camera. I'm going to be up and moving in our gym and at our boards. Cool. Let's start diving into the specific components because there's a lot of them embedded within here. The front end matter has a lot of different dimensions. So I'm going to spend a few minutes just going through all of those. So the first one is our whole, our holistic dimension. Now these are overarching for the entire curriculum. We're going to see another set of these in a few slides down the road. And I'm not going to read these all out. You're all competent teachers and can read. But these, are, these go across all subjects. So if you're a generalist, you're going to be very comfortable with these because they do show up as we go through. The yellow ones in here are the ones that I've highlighted because these ones show up a great deal in the new phys ed curriculum. Key themes. This is the other piece that when I was reviewing the implementation guides, that I really wanted to bring to the forefront because in the gym, for some of you who are really comfortable in the gym, you'll see the link. But thinking critically to solve problems, 
all of these things are so easily embedded in with just a few little tweaks on how you deliver and how you like debrief classes. How to separate fact from, fact from opinion. We're looking at nutrition, growth and development. We're also looking at like financial literacy. My goodness, how much opinion is out there that may not be serving people. Communication, paramount in phys ed. Making informed decisions. Unbelievable in the wellness curriculum. Financial literally, it's a whole core. Computer sciences, not quite so much. Uh, public speaking, again, we have to be able to talk to each other to be able to communicate what we're doing in the gym and elsewhere. The last one is consent. Uh, this is a fascinating piece that shows up from the kindergarten to grade six uh, curriculum. And the way they bring it in is, is fascinating because it won't take much to embed into your regular classes, but also into the phys ed. So those are the overarching front end matter of the entire curriculum, not just the phys ed one. And now we get to our specific physical education and wellness ones. So active living, movement, and skill development. Those are going to be your primary in-gym pieces. Okay, character development, safety, of course those are going to make their way in when we're dealing with how we relate to each other. Uh, they will also be a big part of the discussion within your classrooms. Healthy eating, again, the specifics of that will probably be done in a wellness setting. Healthy relationships will cross over to both. Growth and development, uh, again, some discussion around that, but the action items will probably need to be done in more of a wellness uh, setting. And the last one, financial literacy. The AR, ARPDC already have some great resources, pre-recorded resources to support you through that financial literacy piece. So here we go. Uh, in those first two, these are our seven physical dimensions. So whenever we're looking at active living, when we're looking at that skill development piece, you're going to see these show up regularly. So these are the seven dimensions, very similar to what we had in the former curriculum, but just to reiterate them. So when we're looking at something like spatial awareness, which is, I can't wait to lead that session. It'll probably be like at least two or three sessions on how to assess and how to build spatial awareness in your students. So much fun. But we want to consider these. We have the rhythmic, the gymnastic. Uh, gymnastic does not necessarily mean high beams. <laughs> uh, expressive, this is our dance component. Uh, our individual and group games, our challenging adventurous, challenging adventurous. This is when we're getting outside as some of the outdoor ed kind of experiences. The cultural, uh, which such a wealth of information and games to play. And then just these games pieces. So when we're looking at the character, safety, and relationship cusps, right, more on that wellness side, we have four main dimensions that are going to show up. So these are like the long lines. If we keep these in our mind, no matter what we're doing, if we're pulling these pieces in, you're going to be able to cover all of the specific cusps fairly quickly. Now, I am working on a tracking system for you. That is kind of old school phys ed, uh, but incredibly efficient. But we'll talk about that when we get to our year planning and assessment videos. So in here, consent, mutual respect, dignity, dignity, responsibility. Beautiful, beautiful framework for us to integrate into the gym. And then we have our health dimensions. Remember early on, I said there's a lot of different dimensions. So I just want to make sure you're aware of all of these key pieces. So this is our uh, growth and development relationships again, and some of the nutrition, right? So personal growth and development, nutrition, safety, positive relationship, and reproduction. You'll see these things kind of repeat throughout. All right, so let's dive into the specifics of this curriculum. Lots of moving pieces. Have you, as you've seen in the first part of this video, there's a lot of dimensions in there. Now that you kind of have that overview, I would suggest you keep going back to that, just like the front end matter of our previous curriculums. It really does help focus in on where we should be spending our time. In the new curriculum, we have these like chunks. So the first one is the organizing ideas. That's those eight dimensions, active living, movement skills, safety. Uh, all of those things are going to be our organizing ideas. And they have specific kind of outcomes across grades. The next one is the guiding questions. These are the things that are going to uh, inform your direct learning goals of your knowledge and understanding of the cusps. 
The cusps are those specific lines in the outcomes. The next one is the learning outcomes. Now, these are the ones that are going to direct our direction for student output. They really help us dive in to what the exact deliverable is that we're supposed to be producing. Uh, so again, the eight OIs, these are the organizing ideas. Uh, again, I'm not going to read through them. This is very text heavy. These are all wonderful statements that allow us as teachers to kind of justify that magic pill that is physical education and wellness. It's the thing that if we could package all the benefits up, no one would keep it on their shelves. No one. Because it helps with so much things. And when we look at our current student population, or even if you just walk down the street, how many kids do we see outdoors? How many families do we see? It's a fraction of what it was when I was a kid. Even 10 years ago, I'm a bike commuter. I've been riding my bike to school for 24 years. Rain, snow, blizzard, whatever it is. There aren't too many of us left who are willing to actually go outside and be active. Right? So these organizing ideas, I would post them. I'm putting them up in my gym because they actually do drive what it is we're doing. The safety one is a fascinating inclusion, especially for wellness and phys ed. Crossover is great. I know one of the things I spend time on in my gym, especially with little kids, is what are the hazards you see? What are we going to do about it? You know, it's these little tweaks that allow us to meet these cusps and to check them off. And it also is like, um, it's, a, it's a second layer of protection for us. Make sure we're not just letting kids run into the gym and run around and start playing tag. Right? That's great if we've got an active break, but we're now being asked to teach physical education. And for us specialists, that's what we live for. It's those little pieces, it's the, the subtle learnings that just become second nature. Just as when you're teaching how to read, it's those pieces that expert will use that can pass that on to someone who's new and it, it's a game changer. It's an absolute game changer. Because what it means is that now I can assess where that kid is the first time they read something. Uh, again, you, I'm sure you've read through those. Uh, the last two are the growth and development. Uh, there is puberty and reproduction embedded within that. Uh, the last one is financial literacy. And there's been, uh, I've heard mixed reviews about this one. I think it's fabulous. If you think about how many people in our lives that you know, okay, I'm thinking of someone right now who does not sleep very well, and it's primarily because of the confusion between what's fact and what is opinion. I've been stuck there. I've been given advice that did not pan out. So it's well, my parents. I, I could list so many people who have had troubles with that. And early on in the kindergarten, the grade one, two, this is like, what is money? It's that basic education that's coming through. All right, cusps. So this is the framework. They've broken down our outcomes, what we used to know as outcomes, into three specific chunks. Knowledge, understanding. Remember, those are related to our general questions, right? So the general questions, they're going to give us this. So it's what students need to know. The understanding takes it a little further. It kind of emphasizes certain key pieces. The last one is the skills and procedures. This is where all of our assessments, um, our evaluations, what we're going to use to guide our scope and sequencing, this is the column, this is the, the data that we are going to be, be collecting to report back. And it's in the summary document, I've actually been able to pull out specifically just the uh, skills and procedures. So when you're going to do your assessment, you can quickly review the ones that you're focusing on in that learning cycle. This is a pull out directly from our new curriculum. So as you can see, we've got an organizing idea. This is the movement skill one. That movement skill organizing idea is well, it's the unique one. <laughs> but in general, that's the one that's going to be the same no matter what grade it's in. Guiding question, these are specific to the grade. So they change for every grade. The last one is the learning outcome. Learning outcomes, again, are unique to every grade. 
So the summary document that I've referenced a few times, uh, it will allow you to see all of those guiding questions and learning outcomes on one page, a whole grade. You'll be able to work through that. So it makes it really, I, I think it does, it makes it far more efficient to plan out your year and your learning cycles. And as you, let's just take a look at this one here. Uh, tactics are responsible, uh, our responses, to, oh, tactics are responses to other participants and changing situations. Great, okay, that's what we want students to learn. Understanding, tactics can be spontaneous, creative, or practice. Remember when I talked about vocabulary? This is gonna be some of your pre-setup. This is gonna be how you debrief a class. If you hear kids using those terms, you know you've embedded that knowledge. And that's how they're gonna to start to build on that by the time they're in grade five and six. Skills, implement a variety of tactics in response to other participants in changing situations. You can cover this in a graduated complexity game of truck and trailer. Uh, you can do it with a lead and follow game. So you could see how kids are at this. You could pre-assess this about five minutes, right? So again, those are some of the skill sets that we're gonna try to help you build as we move forward. I wanna talk about these embedded outcomes. So these are concepts that each of the organizing ideas are built on. This is, my, this is your long line for the year. This is that vocabulary piece that's going to allow you to stay grounded when you're looking at all the different cusps and all the different pieces. For active living, it's literally enjoyment, benefits of physical activity, participation, choice, which is a big component, and motivation. Do students understand what they like and can't, do they have the opportunity to participate in the things they like more? Okay, that's the summary of active living. And when you start looking at that, those lenses, the cusps actually become really fun to kind of assess and go through. Number two, movement skills. This has quite a bit of the information from the old curriculum because this is where we build our strategies, our movement skills, and our social, personal development in movement. And it took me quite a while to really get my head around this because where all the other organizing ideas have one question, this one has three. So within this organizing idea, there's three different components. And those components are the strategies and tacticals, the movement skills, and these are your physical skills, spatial, uh, well, not spatial awareness. This is your throwing, your kicking. This is your striking. It's your catching and receiving. Right? This is also where we learn how to modify games so everyone compete, can compete against anyone else. All of your differentiation of skills is going to come through 2B. Now, these numbers are my own structure that I've put on top of the curriculum. When I was looking at how to be efficient in the gym and in my other classes, when I'm teaching this stuff, I needed some way to reference specific outcomes and specific cusps. So again, the resource that we'll talk about in the next video is designed to allow us to do that. So I don't under, could you help me out with 2B6? And that would be a movement skill cusp, and it would tell us the exact movement skill. Uh, again, so this is fun. Yeah, you can read these. The next one is 2C, personal and social development. This is our fair play, our collaboration, and inclusion, conflict resolution. This is, this is the jam of phys ed right there. Phys Ed is one of the best ways to help students grow personally. That personal development piece is at the heart of every physical education class, especially for those of us who have spent decades or even five years in it. You start to see the growth that you can see in kids. The nice thing is about the 2C, the personal and social development, is that you are going to see this mirrored in character development. It comes up in safety when we look at consent like substance safety, they go right into, like how do we know if a substance is safe? So they've done a nice job of creating these nice tidy packages that you can teach in the gym, but then extend into the regular school into more of a wellness kind of activity. Healthy eating. This is another great extension into our phys ed and wellness. They have such a big crossover. When we look at the growth and development outcomes, it just allows the teacher to do this kind of back and forth between the two. And they're fairly straightforward. Uh, we're looking at getting a nutritionist to run some sessions for everyone so you are better equipped with uh, 
activities and knowledge to really drive this home for your students. Healthy relationships, uh, again, this is, this is the jam again, right? Like this is healthy relationships. Phys ed is that one subject, well, it's not the one subject, but I found of all the subjects that I've taught, when we're dealing with a physical environment, it is such a ripe environment for students to be able to develop themselves personally. In terms of friendships, characteristics of healthy relationships, you know, connection, communication, listening, perspective. This is what we all do in our classes anyway, especially the, gener the elementary teachers across the province. I've worked with hundreds of elementary teachers and the amount of time and care and forethought that is put in to how to get kids to talk to each other again, how to bring kids together so you have a harmonious classroom. I know that work's happening. And I hope to learn from you about that on some of our uh, sessions where we all get to get to chat together. Uh, growth and development, we do have some more sessions that will be coming out on that. And puberty and human sexuality, that is part of the curriculum. And I believe it's from grade four, five, and six. Uh, just remember there, you do need parental consent. So all of those forms do need to go out. Uh, other than that, the financial literacy, and this is a piece that uh, as I said, often stirs up some controversy, but when I look at how many friends that I've talked to over the last 20, 30 years who are struggling with certain parts of their lives, often it's financial. And if there's a way by putting this into this curriculum that we start to build some more awareness that going back to those emotional outcomes where students can start to critically think but what is someone's opinion and what is fact? I think that's a great way to kind of complete that bubble of wellness because moving forward, you know, money's, we all like to say money can't buy you happiness, but money sure is important to live in this, in this climate and in our, in our global world right now. And it starts out pretty simple, like what is money? Look at bills and coins and stuff like that. Uh, by the grade five and six curriculum, just looking at personal finances and banking and how do you open up a uh, checking or a savings account. So uh, look forward to just really using that curriculum to make a, a difference in your students' lives. The language code is something that, <coughs> excuse me, is another kind of subset. It's embedded within. When you see the words include, including, and includes, those are required and they have to be addressed. Uh, in the phys ed curriculum, it might say something like uh, locomotor skills, including uh, sliding and skipping. It's not a hard thing, but it gives you that focus. Again, we had talked about the generalist versus the specialist. So for an elementary generalist in grade three, you know you have to do a game or an activity, hopefully multiple games throughout the year, where you're incorporating sliding or skipping. And as you do that, you just watch. And I'll show you a really easy way, if that's what you're evaluating, to kind of collect some summative uh, data on your students. Such as example, or EG examples, that's like it is in most curriculums. That's to give you some ideas. There's some suggestions on where to go. Uh, you can use them or you can change them as long as you get to that uh, end skill or procedure. The last thing is in content. This is in parenthesis primarily just shows up in the financial area. So if you ever see something in brackets, all that means is that they're going to tell you something in kid language and then they'll give you the true one. A uh, good example is something like a loan. They'll probably say something to the extent of an agreement to borrow money and pay it back. And then in brackets, it will say a bank loan. So that's the language codes to be aware of. And summary document. I would like to show you this document because this is the main resource that I've been spending hours on to bring to you. And I just want to show you some of the structure that I'm kind of working through. So the organizing ideas, you can see them down. It's color coded because in the gym, sometimes color just makes things quicker. The next column here is guiding questions and learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are in brackets. The guiding questions and learning outcomes, remember they're different for every single grade. So when you have this document, the grade three, you can actually print the whole thing out and it'll show you, here's my cusp summary. 
it'll show you all of the guiding questions and the stuff you have to do for the whole curriculum for that one grade. In here, you'll notice these numbers. So as I was saying before, uh, active living is number one. So if we scroll through here, I have up to 1.4. So that means I have four active living cusps that I need to cover and track and evaluate for the year. The assessment tool that I'm working on will highlight just the skills and procedures. So it will quickly allow you to determine what it is you're evaluating in each learning cycle and how to build the pedagogy out to do that. So experience and reflect on how physical education supports well-being. Participate in physical education that increases in complexity. Uh, I, the ID, identify and implement uh, personal strategies to overcome challenges in a variety of settings. So it's going to give you as the teacher those kind of guiding questions to build your pedagogy around. And really quick, this is the movement skills portion. So as you can see, I have 2A because in that second organizing idea, we have a whole section on tactics. So in this one, I have three things on tactics. That includes spatial awareness, so how kids move through space. I have movement skills, locomotor, slide, chase, non-locomotor, standing, uh, or sending, retaining. See the included? So by grade th three, we're starting to kick and we're starting to hit. We're getting into games like cricket. We might get into some baseball if you know how to play. Uh, you might get into some world games. There's a game called Kinsey. It's like handball. Uh, and here we have four of those. And this is where we get to bring in all of that beautiful vocabulary on physical uh, training and, uh, and fitness. And the last one is the social emotional in number two. So this is the C, as I had mentioned earlier, teamwork. And it just gives you, like here, engage in positive interactions to support teamwork. Now in a gym, that's an observed skill. That's something that's observed, right? Explore opportunities to contribute to teamwork. Again, we can do this through discussions and by having groups build a team name. So I so look forward to bringing this resource to you and the province and seeing you hopefully on some of our live sessions where we can talk more one-to-one -one instead of just me running through some stuff. Before I sign off, this is the most text-heavy session I will be running. They are going to be moving into more practical stuff talk about resources in the next, and then we're going to get into some year planning and some discussion on what TGFU, which is Games for Understanding. In my opinion, that's what these new curriculums are leading us towards, and it's a fabulous way to start to restructure some of the stuff you're doing as a phys ed team. I'm yours in pursuit of a happier and healthier generation, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.